survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died. For this study, we have as aims to be faithful soldiers of Christ. To be faithful soldiers of Christ. Secondly, to see the need for thorough Christian upbringing and the dangers of such neglect. Thirdly, highlighting dangers of family foundations and carefree life. Carefree life. Fourthly, to ensure relevance and total victory. To ensure relevance and total victory. As introduction, the single most important part of any building is the foundation. If the foundation is inferior, then the entire building will not last. A commitment to repairing these foundations is determined by the work of God we allow in our hearts and lives. Those who do not live by the words of Jesus, we see their lives collapse and broken down by the storms of life. Because their foundation is faulty, the way one views God's word determines how he relates to him. It determines his faith. Everything in the Christian life is built upon the way one takes God's word. To walk by faith and not by sight, one needs a sure foundation in the word of God. If we remember Psalm 127, we tell us that except the Lord builds a house in vain, the laborers build. And in, if the Lord does not watch over a city, of course, the security, they just waste their time. If you look at John 15 verse 7, it's an admonition. When we abide in him and his words abide in us, we shall ask whatever we, wish, we will and we will be given unto us. Second Corinthians 5, 7 is something we should not forget in a hurry. It has a statement we should all cling unto. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Brethren, you find out that many people may think is the roof that is the most important part of the building. So we say if there is no roof, rain will come and everybody will be drenched. But the most important part of a building is the foundation. Brethren, the devil, his cohorts, and power of hell should secretly at the upright in heart. They spend every time trying to silence Christians, keep them distracted, or dismantle their institutions. No wonder why Paul writing to the Ephesians reiterated in Ephesians 6 verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And he will tell us, We therefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that he may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Apostle Peter warns the church in 1 Peter 4 verses 12 and 13. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with a sitting joy. Paul retreats in 1 Corinthians 3 and 11. For other foundation can no man lay than it is laid, which is Jesus Christ. The foundation of all believers is Jesus Christ. Everything we are and do must fit into the pattern provided by the Lord Jesus Christ. Two sure ways to destroy a building are to tamper with the foundation 
or to build with inferior materials. Paul was not telling the Corinthian believers to neglect the pursuit of knowledge. He was warning them not to glory in the wisdom of their leaders and teachers. Their pride made them value the messenger more than the message. We are not to put our confidence in anyone but in God. Remember the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 5. It's already telling us that cause is anyone who puts his trust, his confidence in the flesh. Brethren, it is for us to take note of. And whatever we do, God is saying, cause be the man that trusted a man and make a flesh his arm and whose heart departed from the Lord. For he shall be like the heat in the desert and shall not see when good cometh. For he shall have the patched places in the wilderness in a salt land and not inhabited. Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. Christ is the chief cornerstone of our spiritual foundation. The strength to resist temptation and devil's onslaughts come from the Savior's atonement and sworn surrenders to the Master, Jesus. Putting on the whole armor of God is able to stand against the wiles, that is the tricks of the devil. Anyone outside the spiritual foundation cannot live in righteousness required by God to see his glory. God gives believers strength, wisdom, guidance, and direction in the midst of thorns. Thus, children of God are self-sustained when tempted, tried, and troubled. Remember that in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13, the Bible will tell us that there is no temptation that will come to us that is uncommon to man. And of every, God will provide way of escape. Brethren, we are indulged by God to live righteously, to live victoriously. And this is something we must look up to. Remember spiritual foundations. Spiritual foundations. How do you begin a life? How do you begin your family? Yesterday it was in the news of a, 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 a couple that just wedded barely for four months. But their, their marriage cracked. The wedding collapsed. But after the pomp and pageantry, many people were invited. People came, and uh, if you see gifts, mention them. And uh, the thing did not last just more than four months. It collapsed. If you must really, if you really desire to know why, the foundation, foundation of that marriage. I once knew a young man. He courted the wife. For eight years, eight years, instead that we went to the same school, secondary school. So when the marriage eventually uh, held, uh, everybody was congratulating. But I tell you, I'm telling you what happened. This marriage did not last more than five years. And uh, the, uh, there was an opportunity to set my eyes on the man. I said, eight years, you people caught it. So what happened? And stories and stories and stories. You will never know a man until you know him. Brethren, foundations. Foundation. Before we go into this study, I want to, I don't know, so many of us must have heard about Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison was the man that founded electric bulb, you know. Do you know? That's why I thank God for mothers. If you have a godly mother, a godly wife, you will go very far. You have a godly mother, you have a godly wife, you will go very far. Thomas Edison went to school. And do you know what the teacher told? The teacher wrote a letter, a note to the mother. You know what he said? We cannot help your child. He is dumb. He's a vegetable, we cannot help him. And the boy took the letter and brought to the mother. The mother opened it. The mother saw it and laughed. And said, This man doesn't know my child. I will teach him. I will teach him personally. So he dev she devoted time to teach the son. Do you know that person that was called down by the vegetable was the one who founded the literary bulb? You find that, that foundations will make you say no when the devil is telling you something that is not in line with the word of God. Can somebody say a living amen? Spiritual foundation. 
Spiritual foundation is very important. You can give your children everything there is to give in this life. But when you don't give them Christ, you are not giving them anything. That's why the Bible tells us in Psalm 34 verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him from all of them. There's a time when the weather will be hostile. There may be a time, even when you are friends. Look at somebody like Job. You find out that Job, his friends came to commiserate with him, to comfort him. And they stayed a while with him. Nobody could talk because of the heaviness of his soul. But do you know after they became his problem? Human endurance will expire. Human being, you see, once somebody is in the flesh, you cannot trust him to this door. Somebody, when the devil takes over, you will marvel. But when you see people who achieve for God, there are people who have foundations. People who have since made up their minds. People who know where they are going. We talked about David Livingston. Do you know his friends? You know, say Dr. David. You say you are going to Central Afri Africa. When malaria is pervading and pervading the place, what are you talking about? And he made that statement. He said, I would rather go to the heart of Africa in the will of God than stay on the throne of England out of the will of God. I don't know what makes you think. I don't, want, I don't know what makes us really think. So when we talk of spiritual foundation, you know foundation of a building, it must not be easily seen. It's buried underground. But the foundation of this building is what is making it stand. If the foundation is not strong, you'll find out that it will be unfortunate, the devastation. But we thank God that it is strong by the grace of God. As we talk of it in the physical, so we talk about in the spiritual. We talk of the Wesleys. Do you know what their mother put in for them to be what they wear? Their mother, a, ma a woman of prayer, Susan Wesley, even when their house got burnt, the husband was hard saying, if not for this woman, I don't know how it would have been. We are talking of the mother of the Wesleys. Do you talk of Monica? The mother of St. Augustine. When St. Augustine derailed and was living licentiously, she was on her knees and prayed the husband and prayed the son back to God. Time we fail us to mention many in the scriptures. Have you forgotten the Shunammite woman? Not just that God gave them a son through the yieldedness of this woman. But you find that that when the son became sick on the point of death and they took him to the father, the father said, take him to the mother. What did the mother do? The mother saddled and straight to the man where she got the boy from, where she got the gift. She knew that it's God that gave. She knew that it's God that can keep spiritual foundation. Spiritual foundation. So, beloved, this morning... We are looking at spiritual foundation. But before we go on, I want us to take the test. The test before we go for the we go into the discussions. Somebody please should read First Corinthians chapter 3, verses 10 to 15. Another should take Ephesians chapter 2, 19 to 22. Please, if you are there, somebody help us with microphone. Praise the Lord. I say, by the grace of God has given me, I laid the foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it, but each one should build with care, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is because the day will bring it to light it will be revealed with fire and the fire will test the quality of each person's work if what has been built survives the builder will receive a reward if it is burned up the builder will suffer loss but yet will be saved even though 
only as one escaping through the flames. Praise the Lord. Please another person, Ephesians 2, 19 to 22. Now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built up upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building, fitly framed together, groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I think by now it will, it will have been clear enough what we mean by spiritual foundation but know that uh, this is a bible study so i'm here to moderate in one sense so please who can really in his own words tell us your understanding about spiritual foundation please if you want to make contribution you raise your hand So please, who wants to talk? Yes, please give him microphone. Give him, you want to talk? Yes, please, Amos. Amen. Um, in this context, spiritual foundation is um, a basic, or call it a threshold, encounter or an experience that a child of God needs to have. And it is upon this uh, basic encounter that other development other spiritual development can take place in the course of um, a Christian um, relationship with God we can call it our regeneration experience it become a foundation for other spiritual development perhaps becoming whatever or manifesting any other subsequent uh, um, spiritual gift we have to be built on that first experience, that basic experience. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. Please, uh, okay, give to Venerable uh, Nosike and give to our brother. It has to do with the basis of our faith. Uh, Sometimes the people that ate bread, they were searching for Jesus everywhere. And when they met him, they said, Ah, Master. Where have you been? We have been looking for you. Jesus told them, you are looking for what to eat, not that you have understood the miracles. Today, people are looking for miracles, but they don't hardly understand the worker, the miracle worker himself. Unless our faith is anchored on Christ, he is the author, he is the finisher of our faith. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. Without that, we'll just be roaming about like you know, being tossed about by the wind. So it has to do with knowing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and what Jesus Christ has done for our lives and what can he can do even hereafter. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. I, I want to say that uh, a spiritual foundation is uh, there are those godly principles that taught to us when we are very small, maybe by our parents and even when we grow up we give our life to Christ they are those uh, 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 what do you call them follow up that we we undergo and uh, but but the, the 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 major thing there is that Christ from the word of God all those things that they teach us even when we give our, we give our life to Christ thank you thank you so very much please uh, you will have opportunities to talk okay just drop a word so that we move uh, Please, others, you will have a because the way we are we are answering this thing now is tilting towards only Christian foundation. But as a deliverance minister, I want to look at it from the two angles: foundation being the root of our life, where we are coming from. Because sometimes you see a believer, somebody who is who is born again, a good, who is serving God, a priest, bishop, name it. But because of where he's coming from, the foundation, paternal, talking about where the mother came from or where the father came from, 
you see that maybe dedications have been made, initiations have been made, altars have been raised from that very foundation from where the person is coming from. So that even when the person is struggling to become the best he wants to be, or has already adopted to the life of Christianity and the church, those foundations are still haunting that person's life. Bringing us to that scripture that you quoted, that if the foundation be faulty, what can the righteous do? Which means also that this ungodly foundation has the capacity to even contend with a righteous uh, man's uh, effort to be. Thank you very much. If you look at the aims, the third one, highlighting dangers of family foundations and carefree life. If you remember Jabez, Jabez had to struggle even with what he saw on the ground. His family inheritance. Don't think it's only physical. It pervaded the spiritual. And the mother gave him a name. That name is very symbolic. But he refused to in that line. He had to go to God. That is kind of giving vent to what uh, uh, Venerable Iman has said. We are talking about spiritual foundation. It can be this, it can be that. But of course, we will have to emphasize more on the positive aspect, but not neglecting the negative. That's why I put the third one there. Brethren, the who does not make the monk, but the monkness of the monk. I tell you, if I, <laughs> the rich also cry. If I tell you what happens in Delta State, eh, you will see husband and wife wearing uniform. The uniformity may only be in uh, cloth. If you know what happens beyond the... And some of them are deacon and deaconesses. Brethren. Hmm. You know, there are certain things we don't talk anyhow. There is uh, a family. A family. Very highly placed family. And you find out that one day the wife cried to me and said, Chaplain, look at what I'm going through. For 18, 18, going to 18 months, my husband has not come into my room. If he's in this town and I'm coming, he will move to another place. You see them and uh, you think, this is a happening everywhere. Let me, not, let me leave the political arena. Even in the church. There are some women, there was one who say, if you tell the bishop. There's this song, if you are close to me, there is this story I used to tell about men and bread. You know what A-E means? Eh? <laughs> a man was a dead. The wife was dancing dancing everybody dancing with her until they knew that her dancing was special everybody was tired. they started looking at her after dancing and dancing and she herself was tired he went to the husband and said nah he made him pam jegwa bishop <laughs> praise the lord so you find out that these things are here and there you know so what we are talking about when we talk of spiritual foundation so you find that everything goes. You see, there are many people. There are so many tears. I remember when we were Dickens, I wrote something. I wrote an article. I said, tears of priesthood. There are many tears priests uh, shared here in the altar. Some are crying because of their wife. Eh? Some of their wives cannot make them to shift ground. Eh? Their wives are, are ready to disgrace them in the church. Some are crying because of what the parishioners do. And again, what the devil is doing. So three avenues of tears. So, but when you stand your ground, when you know you are onions, when you understand you are God, that is when you must have understood and, of course, restored relevance to your spiritual foundation. Brethren, so when we talk of spiritual, I'm happy that we are on the same page now. Whether you look on the negative, on the positive, spiritual pervades the physical. It's something you are not seeing, but it is potent. And we are talking about it as foundation. Then how can a work with God be sustained? We are looking at these three places. John 3, 3 to 5. Please read. Second Timothy 2, 19. Isaiah 28, verse 16. Please, if you had the microphone. John 3, chapter, uh, verse 3 to 5. In reply, Jesus declared... I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. 
No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The second one, Second Timothy 2 19. We, even as we read, please be prepared to make contributions. Three people will speak concerning this and we move ahead. Nevertheless, God's solid foundation stands firm, sealed with the, these inscriptions. The Lord knows those who are His, and everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. Isaiah 28 16. Who is Therefore, thus says the Lord God, See, I am laying in Zion a foundation stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, one who trusts will not panic. Praise God. So, contributions now. Yes, please give. Uh... Uh, I'm sorry to bring you back. Could you? this fine spirituality for the lay, for a layman like me spirituality what does it mean spirituality is in the context of uh, pervading the physical something that you don't see but it's affecting an existence we are talking about something somebody yields to something somebody adorns somebody that is something that is ruling a life something that is making a life move in the direction it is going it is not seen but it is there so when we are talking about spirituality in that sense the word spiritual shows that it is not physical and now we are now now talking about being prone to that which makes your life what it is so that is in a short sense spirituality but as we go on, these things we throw out. Please. So let us go back to that question. Yes, Ezana, please. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What we can do, what, how we can walk, uh, how can a walk with God be sustained? I believe that foundations are not laid in a haste. There are processes to laying foundations. Because when we rush into laying foundations, maybe you want to finish, you lay foundation today, you want to start building today, you have not allowed it to dry, it will certainly collapse. So I want to say that there are processes to follow if our work with God must be followed. I discovered that in our present day, in Christianity, for example, we, we have Christians that are not planted. Psalm 1 verse 3. When you plant a seed, it takes time to grow most of us jump up and when you jump up you must certainly jump down but according to psalm 92 verse 12 he said that we are like a tree that will flourish like a palm tree and grow like the cedar of Lebanon. when you grow Thank up you. you remain up and uh, expand so i believe that teaching is a process to a sustainable yes. work with god uh, let me just give vent to what he has said you find that that when we come when we say we are born again when you are born again remember your flesh is not born again there's a process in those days you are born again you go through the follow-up studies to make you grounded rooted and established you see a new baby is giving milk so that the person will grow but the problem is today once you can dance once you can move about and call on jesus you are born again everybody is born again but by their fruits we shall know them so what we are talking about here being born again and like a uh, Canon Ezana has said, it goes through a process. That process, you know, when you, because there's a time you take meat, there's a time you are, we are taking milk, it's a process. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, please, it's like the clergy now. Let's look in this direction. Praise the Lord. The question says, how can I walk with God be sustained? I will explain this. Looking Please at, just be brief. Okay. Looking at John, from John chapter 3, when he said that he who is born of the spirit is of the spirit, who, who is born of flesh is of the flesh. If you are in the church and you have not known the God of the church, that is to say, you are not born again. You have been baptized, but you have not been baptized with the spirit of God. 
you will see that you will behave carnally. You can, your work with God cannot, little temptation, little thing that will happen to you, you may backslide. But Thank when you. the Spirit of God has taken over your life, you will see that you are not more the person living, but Christ living in you. Thank you. And therefore, you will be able to walk because Christ is now the energy that is sustaining you, that makes you to remain in Him. Praise the Lord. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. Uh, we find out that a walk with God can be sustained. We find uh, 2 Timothy 2 verse 19. Let him that name it the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. I have arrived. It's not in Christianity. Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 12. Let him that thinketh his stand take heed lest he falls. So there's something we must watch out for. So I have arrived does not come into it so it's something to note and uh, of course Isaiah 28 16 has made a front, uh, made a point there Christ Jesus Christ Jesus is a source of stumbling there are some people who take Jesus as a small boy I always tell people that will be a boy is only in day by day will be grows up to be a man unto us a child is born unto us a son is given so you find that you, there is growth and I thank God that Jesus is God who came down, of course, to atone for our sins. So when we align with him, I, I must three verse three, say, can two walk together? He said they are agreed. So for us to walk with Christ, there must be agreement. We go over to the next number. Discuss reasons why spiritual foundation of utmost importance. Somebody read Matthew. We just take two scriptures. We may not read every scripture here, but at your time you look at them more closely matthew chapter 7 21 to 23 proverbs 12 verse 6 if you read you make the contribution not um, everyone that saith unto me lord lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth the will of my father which is in heaven many will say to me in that day lord lord have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works and then we I profess unto them I never knew you depart from me you that work iniquity praise the Lord uh, reasons why uh, foundations are of utmost importance if there is no foundation there is likely not going to be a structure therefore one of the reasons why foundations are of utmost importance is that we will go far if we must go far in our Christianity in serving God and in everything we do we need a, a basic uh, foundation which is uh, indispensable praise the Lord just to add to that you find that that you may be whatever you may be a venerable an adjective and in the end god said depart from me i never knew you you may be doing miracles and all that and all that but what we are talking about is are we building to plan are we after today many people are going about i thank god for anglican church because here we 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 are systematic we know what we believe in we don't just do anything for any anyhow anyhow so what we are talking about is not the miracle the, is, we don't go after the signs signs and wonders follow us you don't even need to one thing about anglican we don't even make advertisement that's just the thing we don't even advertise some people will go and make billboards and say that they did this i did that but it's good to tell people so i'm not saying we are doing well about it but we should not take the glory we not share god's glory praise the lord so it's very important we note here that it is not because one thing is that like Samson he was still performing this and that but he never knew that the spirit had left him if you read Judges 60 20 C and you find that he never knew the spirit had left him and when they say Samson the Philistines he rose up and thought he will also operate as usual but he became vulnerable because the spirit had left him may it not be so to us in Jesus name Proverbs 22 verse 6 Please, this way. Yes, please. Give him, give him. Proverbs 22, verse 6. 
teach your child to choose the right path. And when they are old, they will remain upon it. This is where the ACM, Anglican Children Ministry, comes in. We need to take these children as foundation so that when they grow up, the teaching we give to them will remain with them. And that is the foundation of the church. Praise the Lord. Raising up a child in the fear of God. You know, Fanny Crosby, uh, if you have followed her songs, whenever I sing the hymn, Jesus, keep me near the cross. Yes, a precious fountain. She was the one who wrote the hymn. But I want to tell you, she was a blind. She was blind. She was blind. Just a couple of weeks, she was blinded by ignorance. Somebody who thought he was to heal her, you know, eye challenges, blinded her. She became blind. But she refused to give in. Good foundation. Even the grandmother the kind of affection and encouragement. And you know, of course, he later married a blind person, Alexander Steen. But what I want to emphasize here, you know, she sang 8,000 hymns and made 100 million copies. She has brought many to Christ, a blind person, because of foundations. She didn't give up. Today, you hear of uh, suicide. Eh? Somebody, if the mother says you will not eat food, you can't commit suicide. Many things happen because of foundation. But when you see some people, eh, when they tell you what they have passed through, you say, God, to you be the glory. Some people, you know, and that's why I thank God for Anglican Church. There are many people who have passed through the crucibles, even in the ministry, and they remain. But if it were there, they would jump out and form their church. But Jesus is the head of the church. When you understand, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. So what we are talking about, children upbringing, where you take them, uh, what you teach them. Like now, in Asaba here, I won't mention ministries, but about two or three ministries that are prominent, they believe in this grace thing. Grace, once you are saved, always saved. So as somebody that is born again, you can live in adultery, in fornication, and you think that God will look away, May God have mercy in Jesus' name. We are going over to number three. What are the realities? What are the realities of the lack of spiritual foundations? I want us to take, here's the two, very first two. These things you are seeing here are options. You can use that to, uh, you know, expound your contribution. Continuous struggle to live holy. Failure to, at the age of breakthrough, the wrath of God abided on him or her. Hearing of strange voices and other evil persuasions, secret sin addictions, conflict with people as habit, ultimate disqualification. So please, the person who makes this contribution, if you read contribute, uh, we are looking at the first two, the first two, but all these scriptures will take you to these highlights. So depending on the one you want to expound, please somebody help us. Clergy, this direction please. Yes. Romans chapter 7 from 15. For that which I do allow not, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that is good, that it's not good. Now then, it is no more I that do it for sin that doeth that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good I find not. For the for the good that I would I do not, but the evil which I would that I do. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Please read verse 25 and make your contribution. Verse 25. I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Verse 24, sorry. 24. Learn you contribute. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of these deaths? Okay. Your contribution. And the question says, what are the realities of the lack of spiritual foundations? See, I was, uh, I was discussing with some people, I was telling them something about when we, when we were, in the, we just go to church, we don't know what we were doing in the church at that early time of our lives. There, were th there are things we were taught in the church, but there are things that we were not taught in the church. And by the time we began to find out these truths, lying, stealing, and all that, it was difficult, like smoking and all those things. In school, most of us do them, but we found out that we were not able to control ourselves even after being saved. So sometimes you find out that the things that you ought not to do, you find yourself like those who smoke. Even when you refuse to say, I will no longer smoke, a friend of yours who knows will also come to you and say, Thank I pass you. on to you now. And so, because maybe the flesh, which of course you have said you will no longer do, you find yourself doing those things you said you will no longer do. And, and that is where the foundation is not well you know, uh, formed in one's life. Praise the Lord. There's something about First John chapter 1. If you look at verse 7, First John chapter 1, verse 7. But when we walk in the light, as he is the light, we fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus cleanseth us from all sins. Proverbs 27, 17, we tell us, iron sharpened iron. You see, when you say you are born again, you have not arrived. You are not even started. You see, their song, this song, this is the way I sing it. There is something that makes me run into your presence, my helper. There is something that makes us run into his presence. Remember those two men that went to the land of Amos. When Jesus had broken bread and given them to eat, their eyes were opened. And they went straight. The people that were saying it was late, they didn't bother the time. They went straight to Jerusalem. Brethren, I thank God that God helps us. Jesus is the antidote. Jesus makes it better and makes it easy. So we find out that one of the things really that happens and it's a fundamental thing as we know that Jesus helps us. But when we lack Jesus in our lives, you know, we keep prevaricating. May God help us in Jesus' name. First Thessalonians 5 verse 3. First Thessalonians 5 verse 3. Yes. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 3. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. That can be considered as number two in that question three. Thank you discover you. that the reality of life in this regard is that when you have poor foundation, while you are up there, you think you've arrived because of the poor nature of the foundation. You now have failure. Serious one at that point thank you because the foundation is faulty thank you very much brethren the problem with today's church i'm not just talking of anglican no, i'm talking of christendom the problem we have today is that people are presenting the faith eh? they're presenting the crown without the cross they will tell you once you believe everything will fall at your lap it's a lie it's a lie so when they are telling you this this of course by the time you come in, you say, I don't know, this is how it is. So, But when you are told that, yes, they will come, but God will make a way of escape. When you are told that he's engraved us in his palm, we can never be forgotten. He's taught by the feelings of our infirmities. You know, and we that are preaching. You remember what Paul said, that after preaching to others, I myself will not be a castaway. So, brethren, 
So failure at the age of breakthrough, you see, we become complacent. We think that, oh, I, I have arrived. We think this and think that. So it is not always like that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, these other options, by the time we read other verses, we can expound on them. But you know, this is just to sensitize uh, need to read. So please, we go over to number four. And uh, number four, uh, let me just talk about number four and we round up with number five. You will still make your contribution. What are the fundamentals of the spiritual life? Ensuring a walk with God. And we have said here, the new birth access. Access. You must be born again. You cannot pretend it. You cannot pretend for too long. That is one thing about it. The devil is not our friend. The devil will come in this way, come in that way, come in that way. And if the devil knows you are the kind of, te you are temperamental. You know, James chapter 1 verse 20. He said that the wrath of man walketh not the righteousness of God. So you find that the devil comes through various ways. But when we are, when we are born again and we submit ourselves to follow up studies, to know some of these things, some of these things we should know, we find out that we march even stronger. The word access. Word. Word access. The Bible will tell us, study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. In any church I know, in every church, whether Anglican or whatever, the day of Bible study, where you come in, you will wonder, where are the people? But if you say miracle service, everybody will fool. We want miracle. But don't know, they don't know that the word of God is a container of God's power. When it is released, when it's spoken, the power is released. The word of God, very, very important. Very, very important. We should not be afraid. You see, when the Bible says, like in Mark eleven twenty, all things are possible to him that believe it. Do you believe? Do you actually believe? Do we believe? So that's what we are talking about. The word of God is the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. So with that, you protect your salvation. With the word of God, you fight. The Holy Spirit access. The Holy Spirit access. Please, brethren, some of us are fighting against the Holy Ghost. You know, the Holy Spirit is so sensitive. It is a spirit like the word holy. So we, when we yield ourselves unto him, he uses us. But when we now refuse, we bl blockade and uh, we refuse to give him access, there is a problem. Brethren, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, he will tell you, walk this way, go this way, do this thing. There are certain things you'll be doing. There are certain things ordinarily you will not be able to do when you are in the flesh. But when you are spirit, the spirit of God is in control. You find out that it helps us a lot. The faith access. Somebody read Hebrews eleven twenty four to twenty seven, and we make our contribution there. The faith access. Somebody read and contribute. Hebrews eleven twenty four to twenty seven. Are you there? Yes, please, microphone. Go on, go on. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called a son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to share ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered abuse suffered for the Christ to be greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt. For he was looking ahead to the reward. By faith he left Egypt, unafraid of the king's anger. For he persevered as though he saw him who is invincible. Praise the Lord for your contribution. The faith asks here he's talking about with faith we can do all things okay with faith mountain before us can be leveled thank you thank you you see moses eh, chose to suffer affliction with the people of god 
rather than enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. We are talking of faith access. There are certain things you refuse. Certain things you say no to. It's against your faith. We are talking about fundamentals of the spiritual life. Ensuring a walk with God. You know, heaven will be watching. God will be watching. How you are going to take this situation? Moses. He was Pharaoh apparent. Just to step into the shoes of Pharaoh. But something in him. Thank God for the mother, Jochebed. Who, of course, reared him. Nurtured him. He had the faith access. Praise the Lord. The final number, number five for today. Analyze seven steps unto or into greatness. Love the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs 3 verse 5. Love the Lord with all your heart. It's something we should always cherish. Loving God with all our hearts. And the, the, the verses there, they go to buttress that point. Loving God with all your heart. Whatever you do, wherever you go, make sure that God is glorified. Fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. Let me tell you, Proverbs 9 by 17, it may not be here, but it is a scripture you have to note. Stolen waters are sweet. Bread eaten in secret places are pleasant. But he knoweth not that the dead are dear, and their guests are sure. Stolen waters, 17 and 18. So you see somebody eh, going outside marriage. When you bring fire into your bosom, the fire will burn the person. May that not be a portion in Jesus' name. So we must fear the Lord. Seek his face. We must seek his face. Every time. Praying without ceasing. Like uh, Thessalonians 5, 17 will tell us, pray without ceasing. Walk in his way. Seek his face, the kingdom of God. And his righteousness and every other thing shall be ordered unto you. Keep his charge. The charge he has given you. The charge he has given us. If you read Mark 16, 15. Where you say, go and preach the gospel. It's important we do that. When you preach, it is a battle. And God gives you victory. See, in 1 John 5 verse 4. The Bible will tell us, whatever is born of God, overcome the world. Once you are of God, you will surely overcome. God will see to that. So, let us serve the Lord with the best of intentions, without cutting corners. God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Win souls. The person, the soul that winning, of course, the person that winning soul is wise. We must win souls. Brethren, why we've gone through it this way, we have time to go through, to study, and we now have opportunities to ask questions. So, in, in this in interacting, in this interaction, we are able to bring further truth out. So, I don't know how many people who have questions. Yes, one, two, on this side. No, you've spoken before. Yeah, those that have spoken before, please, let's give a chance. Okay, the one at the back, three, then, okay, let's take this three before we shoot up beyond the mark. Yes. Please, straight to the point. Yes, my question. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, the word said, if any man is in Christ Jesus, is his new creation, all this and passed away, the whole, behold, the, the new has come. In Jeremiah 20, 31, Please just drop the question. That, if, that, if that scripture will 29. give us one. It's talking about no longer shall we say that the father has eaten fruit and the child. Eat. And the now my question is, is in line with what we are discussing, foundation basis, to what extent does this scripture apply? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. When we talk, we have already been told that this birth process is a process. So when you talk of foundation and you are building foundation, it's not built in one day. You see, like as you bring your children, like this morning, my daughter will say, my small daughter, daddy, let us go and pray. And before you know it, she say, God is faithful. It gives me joy. I say, God, you have started. You see, this way they begin. And don't think that they will forget easily by the time they grow up. That is foundation. They may not know all things now. 
Just like when you employ somebody today, he will not know everything about the job, the nitty gritties. But time comes when the person comes on board. Yes, you, please. And that will be the one we can take for now. I please. think he has touched my question. Thank you very much. So we okay. Now let's give you the chance, please. Thank you. Mine is just an input on number three: the realities of the lack of spiritual foundation. Uh, spiritual foundation, the reality of the lack of it is seen in our churches. I remember one experience we had recently. We were planning a program and we are praying that God should give us souls. And God spoke expressly and called us careless mothers. Careless mothers. I've given you children in the past. You didn't nurture them. You are asking for more. The people that surrendered to Christ in your previous outreaches and programs, where are they? What have you done to them? And sometimes we plant churches, we just gather people to start clapping hands in somebody's parlor, and we say we have planted church. And we go away, the next thing is to levy them. It's no strong, there's no strong foundation. And such people, sometimes somebody is baptized in a church like this. Thank you. He goes to the next parish, becomes a, a member of Women's Guild, then cross over to another to become a member of Mother's Union. In one year, finds himself or herself in leadership, and begins to cause confusion. It's lack of spiritual foundation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You find that that is for us Anglicans. Uh -huh. You know, many a time we, we just go and preach and we gather two people in somebody's parlor. We say we planted, we don't give them any room, even any breathing space. And when you leave, they will run away because they don't know it that way. Some of them, buses will be coming to take them to some good places. And there they are, we are still subjecting them to a lot of levies. May God deliver us in Jesus' name. Brethren, what we are talking about is for you and I. How are you building? How are you building? People that come to you, will they say they have met a Christian? Will they say they have met somebody who has really been touched of God? Yeah, of course, we may intimidate, we may oppress. But the question is, how many of them will remain Christians? How many of them, after the confines of this place, after the, uh, the uh, fellowship we enjoy, we still remain committed to God where nobody knows them, where nobody sees them? We cause for prayer. It calls for sacrifice. And it calls for encouragement. May God help us in Jesus' name. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Brethren, we may not have touched it all, but thank God for tomorrow we will also have time. Pray that God will speak to us in this regard. Even our children, many a time we look outside. But people God has given us to nurture. How are we nurturing them? To what extent are we making sacrifices? To what extent are we committed to their godliness? Making them know Jesus. As one of them can say, I know my dad. My dad cannot do this. I know my mother. Brethren, that is for us to answer. Precious Father, on our own we can do nothing. We pray for your grace. We pray for your enablement. Help us, O oh God, that after running this race, we will not run it in vain. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit.